some people have said I mounted my servo crooked. Don't know what they are talking about. Hmm. Welcome back my friends. Welcome back to the off-grid garage in not so sunny Australia anymore. But I'm not complaining, we had 100% state of charge today. Fully charged the battery today. Yeah, connected the Tesla now to get rid of some energy of the battery. Well, people have asked me in the comment section what is happening with the Powerball 2.1. I haven't made any videos for two, three weeks or so. Andy, have you given up on the Powerball 2.1? Uh, indeed, I haven't done anything on the Powerball here because I'm still waiting for parts. Especially I'm waiting for the Foodronic plugs here from Seplos so we can connect our battery to the Powerball 2.1. Uh, this is all ordered, but it's not here yet. But then I thought, well, we can actually, we can actually use the other battery here because I don't need any of these stupid connectors. I can just make my own ring lock connectors. Then we can connect this battery here to our Powerwall 2.1. But what we can do without making any cables and connecting batteries to the system here, we can actually have a look at the servo already because this one should be ready to go, right? And I want to show you two very easy methods how to start with a servo GX here if you have bought one and how to connect this to the VIM and also install the setup helper from Kevin Windrum. So first of all, we need to have this cable here untangled and for for testing purposes i've just connected this to the 200 amp hour 12 volt battery here i have so positive goes over here negative over here there's an inline fuse and this one is already connected to the power plug which then goes into the servo down there see there there's power and it just plugs in like this bang done and then we turn on our battery. And after a moment, the servo should come on as well. There it is, it starts flashing. That's good. So the, um, the absolute easiest, by far the easiest method to hook this one up to the internet and to the VIM is by, by using a network cable. If you have access to your router, not too far away from the servo gx use a long network cable and plug it in directly to your router luckily i have one port free and here the other end the other end just plugs in to the network port on the top don't use any of these ports up there this is the network port and you should see the lights coming on yellow green flashing start communicating with the internet and this is pretty much everything you need to do Uh, yeah. So, and then I can relax, sit back, have a spat, start the screen recorder. <laughs> you, know, you should download the VRM app on your mobile device. Yeah, and I can see already my two installations, the off-grid garage and the off-grid garage test. And I have asked you what name should we give the Servo GX once it's online and available here on the Victron VRM on the Victron world. And you have come up with a ton of suggestions. Um, I must say most of them were really like, I, I thought we are friends and we can talk a little bit more openly. So things like the Off-Grid Garage New or the Off-Grid Garage GX or the Off-Grid Garage Servo. This, uh, yeah, we could do this, but this is all very, I mean, this is very conservative, right? We, we wanted to have something fun, something cool. So, Anyway, if you are in your Victron VIM, you may have not any installations in there if this is your first one. You click on the Add Installation button down here. Yeah, and then you select the Servo GX at the top. And here you need to put in the um, installation ID, which is on the sticker on the side of the GX device. And because I have already registered this GX device under my name, Someone got actually the number of one of my videos and tried to register the device just for himself. Because first person who does it is the owner of this device, right? That's why I blurred everything out in the first video about the GX device. It wasn't registered yet. And here, this guy, uh, what's his name? Anton Schönmeier. 
So he tried to sneak into this Zerbo GX because he has seen the code somewhere in the video. And well, it triggers an email now to me because I'm the owner. I need to approve all these access. Nice try, Anton. So you put in the installation ID and then you can actually click on request access and it will then register under your name in the VRM and it's yours. And it's also asking for an installation name for it. So we could use the off -grid Garage GX or the off -grid Garage Servo, but I thought we are choosing something a little bit more, more appropriate. So how about we call this one here the S the SPAT Calibration Center. Hmm? Something like this. And now you will already see the new installation in your overview of the Victron VRM. See, off -grid Garage, off -grid Garage Test, and the SPAT Calibration Center is down here. So we click on that, and then it connects you to your Serbo GX in your garage, in your shed, on your boat, in your RV, wherever it is. There we go. And because nothing is connected so far, it doesn't show any data. But what you can do now is click on the menu item and go to the remote console. Then turn your mobile device and it connects you back to your Serbo GX. You click on the enter button and you have full access to all the settings, to, to all the parameters and now can start set up your device. And I have not touched it. We don't need to work with IP addresses or router configuration, nothing. It just plugs in and it works straight out of the box. So by default, it only connects back to the VRM every 15 minutes. That's why you see the last updated was nine minutes ago. And we can change this later in the settings, but here we can already see it's online. Okay, let's, um, let's unplug this cable again. But what do you do if you don't have a cable connection available from your Serbo GX to your router and you only have Wi-Fi available in this location? Pretty much like, um, like I have here. So what you want to do is see this little tiny hole there? Yeah. So you use a spiky little tool like a paper clip and you push in there just once and watch the LEDs. Hold it for a second. This one turns green. We need to wait for the bottom one. Yeah, there it is, there it is. Bluetooth has just turned on. See, it's flashing, not connected. And you wanna download and install the Victron Connect app on your mobile device. This is one you need anyway. And then under all your devices, well, if you start just from scratch, you won't have any devices there. So in your case, it will only show the Serbo GX with the um, serial number, I think it is. So we just click on that and it's now connecting via Bluetooth to your Serbo GX. It should ask us to pair, there it is. And the default password is one, two, three, one, two, three, six times zero. And there we go. So from here you have got two possibilities. You can go, uh, now I don't want to change the pin code right now. You can connect to the VRM online portal with this button down here, which just brings us back where we have been before. Or you can click on this settings wheel up in the top right hand corner, go to network. And here you have all the possibilities to connect your Serbo GX to your network. So for example, if I want to connect this one to my Wi-Fi, and okay. And here at the top, it is now connected to my Wi-Fi network. And then you go back into the VIM app on your phone and you go to add installation and do exactly the same as we had did before. You click on the Servo GX, you type in your VIM portal ID from the sticker on the device. You give your installation a name, the SPAT calibration center and then you click on request access. And then you are connected again to your Servo GX. But this time it's using your local Wi-Fi and not a network cable. There, there is actually also a third method to connect to the Servo GX when you get this device new. Um, it has a built-in Wi-Fi and you can connect via your laptop or a smart device to the Servo GX using the built-in Wi-Fi here. But I don't really see the point of using this method because it's, it's fairly, 
it can be fairly confusing for people because they need to connect to the Wi-Fi of the Servo GX and then connect back to their own Wi-Fi. And if you mix this all up, it doesn't really work. So I think either plugging in a cable to the Servo GX directly or using the Bluetooth functionality and then configure it so it connects to your Wi-Fi. These are the main methods to connect to the Servo GX, I think. So and once you have connected your server either with a cable or with your Wi-Fi at home and you have logged into your VRM, you can see all your installations and also the SPAT calibration center. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to share this installation for you. Hide my exact location. I haven't put any location in there anyway. Enable site sharing. Password is off. Show on VRM world. And I copy this link and paste it under the video in the description as well as on my website together with the other link from my uh, main production system. So, and let's have a look in the device list. If we can see already our internal IP, no, not now. Um, the internal IP address of your network will pop up at some stage here. I know the IP address already, but if you don't know it, just give it a bit of time and it will show up here in the device list through the VIM. So you don't need to dig into your router and go through lists and just give it a bit of time and it will show up here. See, we can already connect to the console via the VIM. So the IP address is actually known, but it's not displayed yet. Okay, we go into the settings. So in last night, we have installed the setup helper from Kevin Vintram on my production Raspberry Pi. And it opened up a new hole of functionality and information and data displayed in the console as well as on the VIM here. And I want to do the same here on the Victron server as well. So I still got this file here on my USB stick. But if you haven't seen the video from yesterday, here's a quick summary. So you want to go to Kevin Vintram's setup helper page on GitHub and scroll all the way down until you find the link, which is exactly here. Download this file. And after downloading, copy the file on your USB stick. It should be in the root directory, so nothing else on the stick, just this one file you have downloaded from this website. And then we are taking this USB stick and we are plugging this into one of the USB ports of the servo. Don't use the one next to the HDMI port because I think this one doesn't actually work. It is just a power supply if you have a touch screen connected to the servo. So use the one on the left hand side or the one in the middle. Then we go back in the VRM and go into our settings of the servo. Go to general. And here we need to enable root access to the servo GX as well. Otherwise we cannot install any custom software on it. So Go to this symbol here and hold down the mouse button for five seconds until it shows super user. And then we give this one a password. Okay, we are setting a root password and then we do a final reboot of the device. And quickly run to our servo and see if it has any activity on the USB. Yeah, it does. See, now it's restarting. And it's installing the setup helper now from the USB stick onto our servo GX without touching anything, without doing any magic stuff with console or commands. No scripting, programming necessary. Just copy this file on the USB and there you can see the activity. It's installing this setup helper on the servo now. Perfect. This is, this is called the, uh, blind, the blind install, I think, yes, for some reason. So once the servo has restarted, um, nothing has changed, it looks like. So to check if the package manager is already installed now, go to settings again and you should go all the way down. It's the last menu point in the settings menu and it should show us the, let's see if it has worked. Yep, yeah, there is the package manager. This is the setup helper we have just installed via the USB stick. And from here, it is pretty much the same as we have done yesterday. You can go into the uh, inactive packages. And then, for example, we can install the shutdown monitor again here on the Servo GX or the GUI mods, which gives us more information on the main page. GUI mod installation. We go to download enter proceed and now it has downloaded and the install button appears 
and now it wants to restart the GUI. I give it a second, click on reconnect. And we can now see the settings menu item is at the top of the list now. And all your solar charge controllers, whatever you connect, oh, we can actually go into the settings, go almost all the way down until we find, until we find IO, Bluetooth sensors. We enable them, enable this one for a moment. We can disable it again. And our temperature Ruby tag already shows up here. We enable that as well. And this is pretty much it. So we can so we can read the information from the outside temperature tag as well here in the SPAT calibration center installation. So I want to give this one outdoors. And we go all the way back. And here's our outside temperature and the humidity as well now. Nothing, of course, will show here because nothing else is connected to the device at the moment. But if we go back to our dashboard, we should at least see the temperature showing. There it is, outdoor 26.2. It's nice, right? And of course, down here, there's no data or something available. I have also bought some different mega fuses and ANL fuses here to, to mount in our link system. So we can actually start with this smaller battery and connect this one up to the link system here. So we can also connect the link shunt with a CAN bus cable to our Serbo GX then. And then from there we go further down to our battery. Again, connect the smart BMS. And then we can already have a play and see how this all works together. This is all connected via CAN bus then. But the battery uses obviously the BMS can while the, while the Lynx shunt uses the VE can. So this is a different can port. And we need to terminate both of them because this will be the only connection for the time just from the servo to the shunt and from the servo to the battery. Yeah, I'm not sure who said actually I'm not making any progress here with the Powerwall 2.1. That is progress. It is live and it is online. So and as you have seen, it doesn't really matter if you have a cable connection or just a Wi-Fi connection in your location. You can very, 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 very easily set up your Serbo GX to the internet, connected to your VRM. There's, there's no scripting, there's no console, there's no PuTTY necessary, nothing, no code. And if you remember the video I did about the Raspberry Pi to get this one set up, it was a lot more work. So the, the Servo GX is a lot, it is, it is super easy to set up. Oh, we have some very interesting battery testing coming up soon. I'm just waiting for the third battery to show up here so we can do a comparison between all three. It will be super interesting. I'm, I'm super pumped to show you the results of this test. I'm sure it will be super interesting. Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Thank you very much for all your donations. And I also put a link to the Victron Servo GX manual down under the video here if you want to if you want to know more about this amazing device. And you will also find a link to the off-grid power systems in Delaware, Ohio, because uh, Mr. Ed Jones was so kind to donate this Servo GX device here to the off-grid garage. So we can do all the testing here and we will just have a good time, right? Okay, until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.